Breaking news. Nikon has released version 2.0 of the Z9 firmware, and this is a huge deal. This puts the mighty Nikon Z9 ahead of cameras like the Sony Alpha 1, the Canon R3, the Canon R5, in so many key ways. It really pushes Nikon to the forefront. We're gonna take a look at exactly what it means, including some serious weaknesses. But first, I wanna thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Now, if you're interested in the Nikon Z9, then you're probably a professional or you're aspiring to be that. Your photos need to look professional on the web. If you're talking to a potential client, you shouldn't be sending them to your Instagram. You should be sending them to a portfolio free from advertising where you control the layout, the style, the branding, where people see your best pictures, not your most recent. You can't have them email you at gmail.com. That's unprofessional. That shows someone who didn't even take the time to set up their own custom domain. Squarespace gives you all of that. Head there now, squarespace.com slash Tony. Set it up completely free. See all the benefits of the analytics and the stores, things you need because you're serious about your business. When you love it, use the coupon code Tony and you'll get 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace. Before we get into the Z9 stuff, Nikon is also releasing firmware updates for the Z7 Mark II and the Z6 Mark II specifically to improve the firmware. Nikon is fighting hard against the reputation they've developed of being behind in autofocusing. Indeed, when we tested the Z7 Mark II, we found it frequently wandered off onto background subjects. It just didn't lock on like our Canon and Sony cameras did. In fact, this past weekend, I was in Acadia, Maine with Chelsea and I was using the Z9 to film a video. And the number one problem I had with it, it kept wandering off onto the background. This new firmware update promises to improve that. Unfortunately, they haven't released it to the public yet, so you have to wait about a week for us to actually test it and tell you how well it works. Now let's get on to the Z9. Now, this is a free firmware update, but you've kind of already paid for it because Nikon did advertise many of these as features of the Z9 when it launched. They just weren't ready yet. They released the Z9 kind of in a hurry before it was fully baked. The feature people are most excited about is the inclusion of 8K at 60 frames per second raw. This is an incredible amount of detail. The video we're filming here is HD. 4K is four times HD and 8K is four times 4K. So you'd be looking at 16 times more resolution at the same 60 frames per second that we use. So that is the objective announcement. The more subjective thing is, do you want that or do you need that? When the R5 came out with AK 30 frames per second RAW, I immediately tested it. I was very excited about it. After I produced exactly one video, I swore I would never use it again. The reason being, it is so difficult to process these files. They end up so absolutely massive. But Nikon has an answer for that too, and it is NRAW. NRAW files are about half the size of the traditional ProRes files. But NRAW comes with some serious drawbacks. Notably, you can only process it in DaVinci Resolve Studio or EDS X, a software I don't even know. We use Final Cut. Thus, NRAW will be completely useless to us. If you use Premiere, which is very popular, it's going to be useless to you too. Now, they do offer ProRes RAW. However, ProRes RAW is limited to 4K 60. You'll have to wait even longer for 8K RAW ProRes. So most of us won't actually get the benefit from this NRAW unless Nikon works closely with companies like Apple and Adobe to get that codec supported. And I hope they really do. That would make it so much more useful. They're also adding the option for shooting 4K 60, which they had before, but this is not line skipped 4K 60. This is 4K 60 over sampled from full 8K. So basically four pixels will be combined into a single pixel. You'd basically be shooting 8K, but scaling it down. And that provides more color information, but also greater sharpness. In my testing, you can definitely see a difference working with oversampled footage. And if you are shooting in 4K, it's because you do want that extra detail. Now, there are questions over how long it will be able to shoot oversampled 4K 60 or 8K 60 for that matter. And those are things we'll just have to test when the full firmware is released soon. Like Sony and Panasonic, they finally added a red border around the screen when you're recording. That just makes it easier to see that you're recording. 
Interestingly, you don't really need this when you're a dedicated camera operator behind the camera. This is a feature I really need when I'm working in front of the camera, when I'm the on-camera talent and trying to operate the camera because then I'm a little further away from the screen and it can be hard for me to see a little red dot, but having a big bright red outline really helps. But of course, the Z9 does not have a screen that flips to the side, so it's not useful in those applications. Still, I see this as a way for them to explore features that will be included in future cameras, so I'm pretty sure future flip screen cameras from Nikon will have this. Nikon is also introducing a waveform. A waveform is kind of like a histogram is for still photography, except that the waveform actually shows you horizontally where subjects are in the frame so that you can more easily match up the brightest and the darkest parts of the frame with the subject. And I personally don't use waveforms that often. I pretty much just turn on zebras to see if I'm overexposing something. But for those of you who do use waveforms, congrats, it's now an option on the Z9. Here's something I've never seen happen before. They are introducing ISO adjustments in one-sixth of a stop, but only when shooting video and only in manual mode. So basically you will have another tick between each one-third stop traditional ISO. This can be useful for videographers who need to match the exposure of a camera on two different lenses that might have slightly different T-stops or just two different camera bodies that might have different native ISOs. It's not a game changer. Right now you'd end up matching those through grading and post-production, but I can see that it could be useful for some people working in multi-camera setups. In just one second, I'm gonna talk about the improvements to still photography, but first I wanna talk about whether or not Nikon can really make it in the video world because that's a big part of this push. I've been told by a couple of industry insiders that over half of all camera buyers, more like 60 to 75% of camera buyers, are either shooting video exclusively or they're hybrid shooters shooting stills and video. The market for stills cameras has virtually disappeared. Therefore, everybody needs to be good at both stills and video. And me personally, when I've been making camera recommendations, I've frequently been steering people to Canon and Sony because of their superior video autofocus capabilities, which are really, really important to hybrid shooters. So you might be a still shooter who just occasionally wants to film uh, some family video. I would end up steering you away from Nikon currently because this is an area where Nikon has been lagging. But Nikon is trying to fix this. They recognize that they have to master video. And I really question whether they can do that. Now, with the Z9, they are starting at the top end. After all, this is a $5,500 camera. It has all the most specs. 8K has 60 frames per second, beats all the competition. Nobody else in this segment can match this right now. That is amazing. But they're lacking in some other areas. First of all, for people like me who frequently film myself, it completely lacks a flip screen. And it's a little bit frustrating that they don't make this an option because if you inspect the tilting screen on the Z9, you can see it's nothing fancy. It's just some metal screwed into the back and you could very easily just make a different bracket and have the screen flip out to the side with no real engineering. So why not make a flip screen retrofit or just a different SKU that offered a flip screen to open it up to people like me who at least sometimes might need to be in front of the camera or have the camera wedged up against a wall where it would be useful to flip it out in front of it. All of Nikon's biggest competitors in the video segment have dedicated cinema camera bodies and cinema lenses. Canon, Panasonic, Sony all have separate cinema lineups and it's more than just the equipment. They have outreach programs to filmmakers to help integrate their gear. Nikon currently has none of this. They've been such a stills oriented company. In the past they have made efforts to try to work with videographers like at the initial launch of the Z6 and Z7 but I haven't really seen those go anywhere. They seem to still be left behind by the competition. I hope what we're seeing is Nikon ramping up their efforts. It certainly seems like that. So maybe we'll start to see some Nikon dedicated cinema gear. Until then, they're kind of left in a weird middle space because without having proper cinema gear, they're not really targeting the serious filmmakers, but rather they're targeting hybrid shooters, YouTubers, storytellers, etc., like me. But people like me, well, we need a flip screen and we actually don't need 8K 60 RAW. We need like reliable autofocus that can lock on, something that maybe they have addressed. In the past, including this past weekend, using this as a video camera, I found the video autofocus to be 
really inferior to Canon and Sony. And of course, I did not know this firmware update were about to come out. It kind of invalidates all the experience that I've had. I'm going to have to get this firmware and install it and retest it. And I hope Nikon is made of the ground because I really want to see this succeed. But they have a long way to go and it could take many years before they're a really a contender in the video and hybrid shooting field. Now let's talk about the improvements to the Z9 firmware for stills shooters. The one I'm most excited about, the single most useful feature to me is pre-release capture. This is something your iPhone has and it's something a lot of Olympus cameras have. When you turn this feature on, the camera is constantly taking pictures, storing it in the buffer, and then when you push the shutter, it goes back in time and saves files that it's already captured. You do not need this for portraits or landscape photography, but for action, such as sports and wildlife, this eliminates the human reaction time. Human reaction time is about a quarter of a second, and if you don't believe me, Google human reaction time and you can take a test online, but that's, that's typical. And then the camera itself has a tiny bit of lag. The viewfinder has a tiny bit of lag. So when you add all that in, when you push the shutter, you're actually taking a picture about a third of a second into the future. And if you've ever seen a professional soccer player hit a ball or a professional baseball player hit a ball, a third of a second is a massive amount of time. If you wait a third of a second to capture a shot, you have completely missed the decisive moment. So what this does is it goes back in time. And this can save you so many shots. It means you shoot less. Because let's say you're trying to capture a baseball player hitting the ball. You want the moment the ball hits the bat. Well, you would have to have the shutter pressed before the baseball player even started swinging or else you might miss the moment. And then nobody is batting a thousand, right? So he's gonna be missing most of his swings you're gonna to have to be recording every single swing just hoping he hits it. With this pre-release capture feature, you keep your focus locked on him. You keep your finger rested on the shutter, and then when he hits it, when there's contact, then you press the shutter. And it can go back up to a full second. That's configurable in different increments, and then you know you've got it. So you don't have to be pushing it proactively. You don't have to be wasting any frames. And this is such a game changer. This is something all the competitors will have to introduce. I don't know why they didn't introduce it when Olympus came out with it and we said it was incredibly useful, but they haven't. Thank you, Nikon. In fact, this was something we specifically asked to be introduced when the Nikon Z9 was launched, and I'm glad to see it here. We really need more features like this to help us manage those incredible 30 and 120 frames per second. A feature I don't find that useful is custom wide area AF, where you can just draw your AF boxes in different shapes. This will allow you to, as the example here shows, draw a box that fits particular form factors for particular sports, like focusing on any one of the faces in this particular box that's above the hurdles. I personally wouldn't find this useful. I would just use single point AF and eye detect AF and lock onto the face of the athlete that I wanted to track or whoever was in first place. But I can see for different sports this might be useful. They're offering a feature called Motion Blend, which in camera will stack a series of pictures together. This is something we've taught before using Photoshop. It's a cool trick. People really like it. It's definitely more of a like consumer-oriented trick. It's not something a professional would ever do, especially in camera. Basically, you would normally need video to show motion or a sequence. It allows you to capture a series of frames in a still photo, so you could show motion in a newspaper, for example. It's a cool trick. There's also a feature called Save Consecutive Frames, which allows you to capture a video and then export those out to stills. Now, I've talked before about why I don't find this type of thing to be that useful. Generally, when you switch to video recording, it's not quite as effective. You don't get to just start and stop quite as rapidly. The autofocus tends not to be as good and you have that kind of weird 16 by nine aspect ratio, which I don't love for stills. But I do know that some people like this, so here you go. And again, trying to establish themselves in the video market, they're introducing the MCN10 remote grip, which includes quite a few video features. They're trying to basically make this into a cinema camera without releasing dedicated cinema cameras. This sort of dedicated hardware will indeed help them reach a wider video audience, and I think this is probably the first of many different similar things we're going to see from Nikon. 
as they begin to make video really a key part of their product management strategy. These firmware updates will be released to the public on April 20th, so just about a week. But it's weird because they're not being held up by manufacturing. This is just a download. So why don't they release it to the public broadly right now? The answer is probably about public relations. They want a lot of hype about this firmware, but they don't want your average Joe to be testing it right away because we'll no doubt find problems with it. I might find that something overheats or the autofocus doesn't quite work as well as you would hope. Thus, they get to control the release. They can provide the firmware to their partners without really worrying about it being overly scrutinized. In other words, for the next week before this actually gets to be released, the firmware update itself is basically perfect and flawless because nobody can find any problems with it. And a week from now when it is publicly released, it won't be interesting news. Everybody will have moved on to the next big thing. And thus, if we do make a video about the firmware update actually testing it, it won't get nearly as many views as it would have today. So by separating the launch date and the release date, they do manage to quiet down more objective reviewers while helping to promote their own partners. At least that's my take on it. I'm not a mind reader. That's just the only reason I can imagine they would announce it a week prior. In the comments down below, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Are you a Z9 owner who's excited about this? Or maybe you're still waiting on your Z9, or maybe you're gonna get the next generation Nikon and you hope some of these features trickle down because I'm sure they will. Be sure to subscribe and check out our sponsor, Squarespace, for any type of website you need. Squarespace provides a professional, easy and inexpensive way to have a permanent web presence. An amazingly designed website that is so easy to use, you just need to drag and drop. I've never had my websites go down that I've noticed. They've been extremely stable and I just don't worry about them. Unless I take a new great picture and I wanna put it in my portfolio or I'm updating one of the several other Squarespace websites I have for different business projects. If it's easy enough for me to set up, you can definitely set it up. Go to squarespace.com slash Tony. Check it out, test it completely free. When you love it, use the coupon code Tony and you'll get 10% off. Thanks for sponsoring us, Squarespace. Bye.